Happy Thursday! You guys ready for the best show ever? ever. Welcome to Day Night with Connie and Chrissy. I'm your host, Connie Enriquez, and my crazy co-host, Chrissy Bo. What was that sound? Was that like Vanna White? I feel like that was Vanna. the universe giving us a, a sign <laughs> that it's going to be the best show ever. Sound like Vanna White when she does the letters. Yeah, like, how does it really work? And meanwhile, she only just tapped it and the I light know, went on. And then she walks away like I nothing know. ever happened. And then she's like, I hope you get it for $500, <laughs> right? Hope you get the car. That's right. And Pat Sajak's like, all right, <laughs> you're next. They're like, all right, He's Pat. He's like, all right, screw you, Vanna. Let's move yeah. on to the next thing. <laughs> How'd you do that, James? How'd all you right. make that sound? Yeah, fine. Our videographer doesn't even care, guys. Tell you. He's on Yom Kippur time. It's I thought right, it was the universe. Uh, he thinks it's Yom Kippur Yom today. Yom Kippur is tomorrow, right? Yeah. It was yeah. the law of attraction, actually. Yeah. Oh, Ooh, James, James is, is learning. Answer. James is learning how it all works. <laughs> anyway, we're super excited to be here on a Thursday evening, I which know. is different, and a change up from our Friday evening. That's right. And I believe we're still recovering from last Friday night. Your party was amazing. Oh. We had Connie's birthday party. We had DJ Eclipse on the, the ones and twos. Everybody came out. It was amazing. It was the best birthday so ever. <laughs> my husband. That's right. Oh, my God. Eli. First of all, I want to say a big shout out to Margarita and Irwin, who is yes. our neighbor in Eagle Chase in Woodbury, which if you're looking for a place to live, this is the best place <laughs> ever. Oh, I haven't heard that Just in a saying, month. Just saying. It's in Woodbury. <laughs> and they were so sweet. And they actually gave us our wonderful new bartender, which him. is right behind me now, Eli. Eli, we love, and you know what, he looks bigger than what I thought. You know what, Maybe Eli, I was drunk on Tito's that night. You probably were, I feel like we all were. I know, but I don't remember him being that big. He's pretty big, he's human size. I'm pretty sure I tried to make out with him, and a lot of dust was flying off She's of his like, face. She's like, Connie, he has dust in his hair. <laughs> I'm like, don't worry about it. I love him so much. Is he not adorable? He takes the place of our bartender when our regular bartender isn't here. That's right. So, John, we miss you tonight. John Craft. We love that you were here last week. You did an amazing job. We have That's your right. Tito's right back there uh, waiting really? to be, like, to have in, like, the next it's two weeks. It's marinating, right? Yep. For two weeks, he told us. And uh, so, John, our bartender, did an amazing thing. He dehydrated strawberries. <sighs> I got that right. It. In Tito's. And he dropped it in Tito's, which is behind us. So in oh two weeks, God. which at this point will be there's one John. week. There's John. John Crabb. But look at that face. He's like, who the hell are these girls? <laughs> That's what Steve Brill is going to be right? saying later. <laughs> He's like, who? Where am I? Where am I? <laughs> exactly. Meanwhile, we said, John, whatever you do, don't <laughs> hit the bar because the word bar will fall off. Yes. That just happened. And he's the bartender at IMC Restaurant in Huntington Village. you got to check it out. Best food, hands down, that I've ever had in my life. And you said they have the best brunch. Best brunch, best everything. It's beautiful in there. It's pink, it's sparkly. Gorgeous. Chandeliers. Crystal chandeliers over there. Oh, my God. It's, it's date night written all over it's it. date night. Date night style. And you got John Kraft there. That's right. Who's a professional. That's right. And he's an amazing bartender. So he is. He did an amazing job. He looks frightened there, but he did an amazing <laughs> he job. He looks frightened there. He really there. did, I know. There's us with our amazing guest from last week. Oh, uh, Kershaw. Kershaw. Who did an amazing Kerboom job, too. Ka. That's right. And then there's us again upstairs. So basically, we had our show, and then we had a huge after party. So that's amazing. us up in the kitchen. That's us with Maureen, the matchmaker of Long Island. That's right. If anybody's looking for their soulmate, contact Maureen. Single, ready to mingle. MTM There's Jeff's parents, Marsha and Shelley's. No party would be complete without them. Adorable. There's my parents and my sister. My birthday party wouldn't yeah. be complete without them. Then we have our lovely videographer and his beautiful girlfriend, James and Melissa. Of we course, love you guys. I know. Thank you for everything that you guys that do for us. Picture. It was good, right? That sound, that looks profile. like a Facebook profile picture. Frank Mullen. And I don't know where that gentleman Frank is. Frank Mullen of Suffocation and my cousin, Rob <laughs> D'Esposito. I mean, Rob. My cousin's husband. And then Ed Cookie Jarvis. And we the, love you, Jarvis. And then Cutthroat That's Kitchen right, Cutthroat Champion. Kitchen Champion, DJ, <laughs> chef, made it in the house. That's right. There's my cousin, Nicole, hanging out. And, and there's the Henriquez family. Wow. Yeah. You got a good picture of the whole family. I know. My mom's always a We need to hire up. Janet, our photographer. Janet, Janet was amazing. A big shout out to you. Yes. Janet, you did an amazing job with pictures. We you love you, great. Janet. So that's the Henriquez clan. That's us with Helen. Helen. We love you. Law of Attraction coach. That's we right. We have Coffee, her, who provided our amazing oh Jell-O date night cups. Coffee's Jell-O bar. If you're ever looking for something to spice up your event, Baby shower, wedding, anything. 
Coffee's Jello Bar, amazing. She did our personalized date night with Connie and Chrissy Jello shots. Check I got the Hennessy one. How did I end up doing the, the Hennessy first, uh, Jello shot? The shots? fact that you took it and I knew it was, was Hennessy, I'm impressed. I knew. How did you know that? Because I just know. But do you drink Hennessy? No. But I know what it tastes That's like when impressive. I taste it. <laughs> and a big shout out to Tina, too, who was in that last picture. Also, my cousin Jen, my brother Tom, and my sister Nat again in front of the date night separate repeat. That's right. Then we have me blowing out my cake with my honeys in the background. Jazaf. Jazaf, who's a big, who I want to say a big thank you to because I love him with all my heart and he's the Aww. most amazing person ever. He is the possessed. He really is. And that's Lori and Eric. Uh, Lori. Jeff's sister and brother-in-law who, who we, we have a good video on him doing karaoke. Oh my god, we, we do. We should show that on date we night. totally <laughs> should. Get Jeff to Disco, Disco Inferno. Inferno. That was amazing. Eric's the king at that. I sent you guys the video. <laughs> that was hysterical. <laughs> a big shout out to Allison and our boyfriend Ian who are awesome. Oh. He was on call. They we hung out. Yeah, she was adorable. And then we have Krishna, Hector, Coffee Again, Chef, and Nancy, who we love, who's always a supporter of our show. That's right. Shout out. And our events, even though she... Uh... Oh, there we go. DJ Eclipse. Our DJ of choice. DJ of choice. Date night DJ. So if you needed music, hire DJ Eclipse. That's right. He plays all the songs I want. That's right. That's us with John the Bartender again. He doesn't Scotty. look scared there, thank God. Scotty! You're coming up, Scotty. Scotty's Hold on, coming okay? up. Scotty's coming up. I really up. want to post that funny picture with Scotty. A shout out to Frank oh. Doyle, who was a keyboardist for Meatloaf That's back right. in the day. He's also our neighbor in Eagle Chase. Of That's course, right. the place and I to love be. Meatloaf. I love Meatloaf. Eagle Chase Woodbury. <laughs> <laughs> There's Scotty! Scotty made it. Scotty and made Andrew. It. Shout out to Andrew. Shout out to Andrew, <laughs> my sister Nat. Meanwhile, I wanted to really. I Scotty don't, looks like I'm kidnapping him. Scotty's like, Look at him. Dane Nat, you guys are amazing. He looks like I'm, I'm stealing him. He does. He was like, my consolation prize after your birth. <laughs> <laughs> a big shout out to John and his woman, Brittany. Oh, that's a nice out. picture. That's an adorable picture. And the rosé, which is the most that's amazing right. rosé ever. That's right, it is. Sparkling, delicious. That's right. Rose. Our neighbor, Margarita and Irwin, who gave us Eli, who we love. And then we have uh, Frank Doyle and Maria, his woman. I Where think people they? get offended oh. by that. His wife, whatever. Oh. They do? I don't know. I'm only kidding. But sometimes I'm like, where's your woman? And they're like, oh, startled. Like, oh, my woman. I'm like, yeah, you woman. Who cares? <laughs> you woman. I'm a woman. We're women. Well, ask Steve Grillo what he thinks about all that. So anyway, they hung out, which was great. <laughs> and then, uh, so that was excellent. So we had an amazing party on Friday night. And then Jeff and I had to get up really early on Saturday. Oh, jeez. Because the trooper that he is, is that he presented at New York Law School the following day. Did an amazing job because Jeff is the funniest lawyer ever. That's right. He's super brilliant and yet he's super he's funny comical. Funny because he's a Pisces like me. He is, <laughs> and it's so funny because we were there for a couple of sessions. Everyone did great, but he was definitely funny and definitely got the crowd going. So good he's job a to you, Tuts. Yeah, because he's. She'll a, never give us the acknowledgement, Jeff. You're a Pisces. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So he did a great job. Good and job, Jeff. For my birthday, we did something which I think is a great date idea. Oh, yeah, you never Jeff told me. Jeff actually took us on a sunset cruise around Manhattan. I never did that. And we actually saw the Statue of Liberty. Now, I've never seen the Statue what? of Liberty. You did? Of course I have. What? When you were little, no you were way. On a, never. On a trip with school? No. That's crazy. Wow. That's fun, like a field trip, right? Yeah. Yeah, no. Anyway, you can <laughs> go to Sunset. It's at a Chelsea Piers. <laughs> if you check it out, you can see all of Manhattan. It's actually Gorgeous. Did someone the, take that pic or did you? No, I, hello. Wow, it's you did a good job of doing that. Yeah. yeah. I was like, let's get the lady in there. We got the Liberty. Lady, in. lady we got Liberty. The lady in. That was uh, oh, that's a nice pic. the background. Isn't that gorge? Was yeah. it, now, was there booze on the. Uh, of course. Right. Tito's? There was, there was. We stuck with wine because I forget oh, no. why. Maybe because we drank Tito's the night before <laughs> and I wanted a break. Like, yeah. Tito's rose and everything else. So, anyway, that was the beautiful backgrounds. And then also, um, just want to give a shout out to SSKBLaw.com. So, your lawyer, if for any reason you need one, right. go to SSKBLaw.com. If you've been injured, check it out. SSKBLaw. <laughs> exactly. Come That's on. right. Thank you very much, Steve. Thank God for our guest tonight. We're not there yet. <laughs> so we oh, had sskblaw.com presentation at Met City Fields, oh, which was amazing. We, so that's us having a fun time, which was great. Yeah, seats, wow. I know. Who would they play? Do you know? 
Did they, they win? Braves, the, Braves. the Braves. and did, they lost? Oh, I don't know. I feel like man. they're out of it anyway. But did you go to the Tito's bar there? They, the, they have them in the little Mason No, bars. we did wine. We oh, did wine. how do you not go to the Tito's I bar know, there? Because Tito's is questionable. Oh, Jesus. Liquor's questionable. And then the next, and then we did meditation. Last night I took Jeff to meditation and singing bowls. How'd you like it, Joseph? You know what? He fell asleep. No! He did. He did. <laughs> Were you snoring? I may be. But he's, su he's such a trooper. He's such a trooper because he was exhausted. I'm like, we're going to have fun. <laughs> yeah. And I heard him, like, sleeping. I was like, oh, I'll let him sleep. Aww. And then I heard someone else really sleeping. It must have been a really good meditation. Though. It was. But he was super tired. Yeah. But anyway, it was really good. Did you good. have to carry him out? No. He, I was just, like, he was like Eli or Bart. No, I just, like, squeezed him. I'm like... Baby, you're snoring loud. <laughs> All right, let Joseph sleep. <laughs> and that was at Absolute Yoga in Woodbury, so check it out. All right. And That's you did it. some what? Banging on the drums? No, they did oh, no. like the, uh, what is it, those like those bowls? Like yeah, yeah, yeah. bowls. It was like part of the meditation. I don't know. Were they making sounds and yeah, stuff? Yeah, like exactly. Yeah. It was an hour and a half. It was great. Anyway, so that was our <laughs> wonderful week, which was super busy, and now we're here. And now we want to give a big shout out to our DJ, of course, DJ Eclipse. Who DJ we love. Eclipse. If you need a DJ, definitely check out them. Check DJ Eclipse out. We, we love, love you, Eclipse. Him. And a big shout out to our nutritional shake That's of right. choice. I already had it today at lunch. Me too. Rock and wellness, baby. Superfood. You got to get it in your system, baby. Give you energy. Get out of depression. It does everything. Almond. So you want to you want to mix it with vanilla, almond milk, unsweetened strawberries, unsweetened. bananas, and tons of ice. Organic frozen strawberries. And it's like a super chocolate covered yes. strawberry smoothie. It's the best thing. I ever. add in some uh, powdered peanut butter as well. You do. A I've, little I've bit. I've never Just heard of powdered hint. peanut butter. And some but raw cacao. Even the raw cacao is already in this. Oh, you like it? Add a little extra because uh, it you know it speeds up your metabolism. It's it anything. Does? To, yep. Google it, Connie, after the I show. I didn't know that. Wow. Google it, guys. Uh, raw cacao is good for speeding up the metabolism. I love it. But it does not even taste it. There you go. <laughs> you know what? That okay. might be the answer because it really does work Steve like it. Steve Gorilla said it's chocolate cocaine. But it's so amazing. You have to check it out. And you but can that's go how good it is. And go to rockandwellness.com and you can save $10. That's right. But you only have until September 30th. So that means you have oh. to do it tonight after the show. Oh, my God. Order it. Our special favorite right now is a chocolate cacao. I love this one. But they also have uh, the vanilla mocha. Vanilla mocha. Which, because I'm not a coffee drinker, so I don't really like mocha. It doesn't taste like coffee. I you know. You got to switch it like off. The chocolate. Switch because it off. you were right with the chocolate strawberry. It tastes just like a chocolate strawberry shake. And then I put Amazing. whip and Jimmy's. I don't. Ah, oh, the Jimmy! She puts condoms all over her shake. <laughs> Jeff, did the you hear sprinkles. this? She puts the, condoms all the over sprinkles. her shake. What the do you think sprinkles. about that, Jeff? All right, right, fine. I put sprinkles on mine. You can put Jimmy's, whatever you want, Connie. Whatever. It's the most amazing you. thing ever. But Rock and Wellness gives you energy. Go get it right now. Rockandwellness.com. Date night. Not right now. After the show. After the show, put in date night code. <laughs> Save ten bucks. That's right. And then a big shout out to Sonoma. Uh, Phil, we love you. We love our cups, but we need more because Connie keeps putting them in the dishwasher, dishwasher and they're Did you think I was off. really gonna hand wash this stuff? Come on. <laughs> she. <laughs> Phil, call in live now and let us know. There's 50 right now in the dishwasher. <laughs> but these are the best cups. If you have anything that you need to be printed for your business. Shirts, anything, bags. Anything. Step and repeat, they do that as well. Sonoma Ooh. Group. Uh, go to sdipromo.com. Tell them, uh, tell Phil we sent you from Date Night with Connie Chris. That's Kristen. right. That's sdipromo.com. Steve Gorilla, you need some cups, bro, with your name on it. Sure. That's right. All right. That's right. Of That's course. Right. And now we're ready for my Star Loving Life tip of the day because it right. wouldn't be complete without it. That's right. I got to look at it though now. All right. <laughs> All right. All right. Oh, so what I everyone else it. is doing is none of your business. And unless it feels good, don't make it your business. Let me feel like the that. room. That's around. a good one. Yeah, Every, right. All right. So, da, 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 da. All right. So everyone has a right to choose what's right for them, right? So you think about it, you go to Facebook, you look on the news, yep. everyone's complaining, NFL, oh, yeah, president stuff, whatever. I'm not going to get so specific, but you know exactly what I'm talking about. Yep. And the point is this, why would you let anyone, including someone that you think has a lot of power over you, influence how you feel? Don't give yep. your power away. All the control you have is in your mind. Don't look at it. 
That's right. I don't right. watch the news. Exactly. If it's not on Facebook, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I'm only kidding. No, that's I'm true. I don't kidding. watch the news. Right. So the thing is this. I, I see Bravo TV. Right. We see, so, we see so many people get angry like, oh my God, this is going on. This is going on. Like, dude, maybe in your world, but not in mine. Exactly. And if you want to invite it into your world, then yeah, you're going to feel like crap. You're not going to feel good, which to me, I don't feel is really beneficial. So really be selective about what you give your attention to mm -hmm. and know that all the power that you need is up here. So don't let anyone, anyone, control <laughs> or influence the way you feel because it really is not worth it. All right. the power you have is up here, right? It, I agree with you. Or I hate when people are like, oh, talking about some tragedy, like <sighs> I didn't even hear about it. They're like, you right. didn't hear about it? You're like, I'm uh, glad I didn't no. hear about it. Right. Exactly. Right. Because like, you know, I'm happy it. over here. Exactly. If that's don't bring me down. Exactly, exactly. And don't forget, you have the everything that you have the power to influence is based on what you focus on. So mm -hmm. focus on things that make you feel good and that make you feel inspired and things that you can work on and things that make you feel happy. Don't focus Agreed. on things that A you have no control of yeah. and B, it's none of your business anyway. Let people do what they do, right? Everybody has to force their opinion. It's annoying. Exactly. Just everybody shut the hell up. <laughs> shut the hell up, right. So go to starlivinglife.com. Watch the Kardashians or something. Take a load off. Even they have the word. I can't even watch them anymore. But I anyway, know, but saying, they're all pregnant. Take your mind off of things and uh, come on. And then also I have a uh, program for kids, 30 days, Star Loving Life. <laughs> like, hello, who doesn't need that? So check out starlovinglife.com. There it is. Say no to therapy if your kid doesn't need it and say yes to confidence and believing in themselves. Hello. Maybe Steve Grill will join the uh, kids right. program. That's right. There you go. <laughs> Starlovinglife.com. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, dude. All right, time for my bestie of the week. This is, this is amazing. Do I get a long paragraph like you just had? Let there me see. There you go. If you write it that's out. That's it. That's what I got. I don't you, have a next. If you write it out, you could have it. I don't it. have a next slideshow. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Anyway, my sister bought me this because anybody who knows me knows I love karaoke. Love the mic. Right, Giuseppe? I bought my own karaoke mic. Yes, you did. Right? Rock solo. That we'll talk about another time. But uh, my sister found this at Hallmark. This is genius. It's a mini karaoke microphone. You can attach it to your iPhone or any phone that you have, and then you can just do karaoke by yourself, which I enjoy doing. So wait, so let me see. You can just so you do it by it. yourself. It's a little mini mic. And then you hold it. That's right. Download the app, and then you plug this into your phone. I should take it out, actually. I don't know why I still have it in the box. I love it. But um, me and Diana did it. We sounded horrible. My brother-in-law was telling us to shut the hell up. Oh, my God. He was trying to take a nap, and Diana and I were rapping. It was terrible. It was awful. <laughs> I love it though. But look at this. It just attaches to your phone. Giuseppe has my phone. So now how do you hold it? it? Do you hold it like this? Well, I was holding it up to my mouth. Diana kept trying to take it away. I'm like, you know me with the mic. I got to have the mic up to my mouth. Control. I have a thing with the mic. Yeah, she does. <laughs> she does. It doesn't matter. The point <laughs> is, we're getting off the topic, guys. This is a mini karaoke mic. My my videographer's. Oh, you're wrapping me a up for shoe? my for my bit. He's doing it with a shoe. Finally, up, finally, I'm on my bit, and now you're wrapping us up with a shoe. Anyway, you can whose go to shoe Walmart. is that? Yeah, whose shoe is that? Is that Steve Brillo's? Mini karaoke microphone. It works for any phone. You could download the app. I love and it. And then you could do karaoke anywhere. It's actually I heard a lot of great singers. It sounds really good on the app. I don't have a good voice. That's the problem. Is that no, your sock? No, no. Now you're showing me a sock. There is no one who does get low better than you, dude. First right. of all, that challenge is your song. Me. You want to challenge me against get low? All right, challenge accepted. That's right. Let me know. Message me tonight. You want to challenge me against get low? You're invited to our next after party. Let's That's do right. it. That's I'll do it on this little mic. <laughs> I don't even need the other mic. I'll do it on this mic. Challenge accepted, Connie. This was the best invention ever, though. I didn't even know this I existed. It's so tiny. But it works amazing. It does. I'm going to do it with you, and All you're right. going to see after All the right, show. Good. I love it. Because I didn't think it would really work. Yeah. And then it's amazing. I love it. Wait to hear it. Diana needs to be here, though, because I'm not technical. <laughs> Actually, we have our videographer here, so he'll help us. He'll be fine. I feel like he's looking to fall asleep over I know. What are you, falling asleep? It's not Yom Kippur. Oh, Jesus Christ. You're going to be fasting in like 12 hours, bro. Get it all in. All right, so we have Steve Grillo coming up from the Howard Stern Show, if everybody remembers. Uh, Steve for, Grillo, formerly, formerly of the Howard Stern. I got that right on the flyer, right? Yeah. But anybody who was a Howard Stern fan knows Steve Grillo. Come on. Right? You know him. That's he used right. to bash the crap out of this poor guy. So we're going to take a quick commercial break, and we'll be back with Steve Grillo to see what he thinks about Date Night with Connie. Yeah, yes, best, best show even, ever. He's here tonight. <laughs> Hey 
there's a lot of things that make Tito's vodka different. We like to make vodka with some body in it, so it kind of tells a little story. The pot still is a big part of it. To get it just right, we distill it six times. We use 100% corn, it's gluten-free. Won the Ultimate Cocktail Challenge, Best Vodka and Tonic. Won the World Spirits Competition, Unanimous Judge's Choice. Best Vodka out of 72 vodkas. There's nothing better out there. If I found a better vodka, I'd drink it. Yes, yeah, Keith Rillow in the house from Howard Stern, formerly of yeah, Howard I'm Stern. Yeah, he is. Everybody knows him. Howard Stern picked on him. Everybody picked on you. Yeah, my whole life. That's so horrible. Bad for you. My whole life. You held uh, your own, though. You held your own. You held your own, though. Yeah. Very no, I've well. I've some thick skin. I'm from Brooklyn. You can't fuck with me. Oh, there you go. I know, because I would be getting pissed back at well, all well, them you know, picking it, on it, me. You know it, what I mean? Well, it's something my father never understood. Like, I'd come... When I first started working there, I told my, I told my dad, you know, my dad's, like, super quiet. Completely really? opposite of me. Yeah, because like, you're not. Uh, <laughs> my mother's the, the loud, boisterous one. My dad is like the, the quiet Italian guy that sits in the corner and don't talk to nobody. Uh, I told him, don't tell any. He was a mailman. I said, don't tell oh. anybody at work what I'm doing. <laughs> Deny that it's me. And he goes, what do you do? He goes to work. He tells everybody. So now well, here I am getting proud of you. no, but here I am getting my ass handed oh. to me on the air, oh. and all the That's guys. He's a sensitive guy. He can't take ribbing. Oh. So they, oh, girl, you fucking son really got it today, you know. And he come home and be mad at me. Why did Howard have to do that? Why did he Why do that? Howard and I'm going. I told you not to fucking listen. I told you not to tell everybody. But what did you do? You told everybody. He goes. I said, Dad, you got to understand something. It's like. People in their cars, they want to laugh. If he goes, yeah. good job, that's not funny. Good and you job. don't understand when he goes, okay, we'll be right back after these words. <laughs> and he goes, great job. Oh. Like my dad saw that oh. side. But so you were teaching your dad, right, to lighten up. My, there is no lighting up, yeah, lightening up for my right. father. My so father dad, is you need so to li listen, tight. That's just the way it works. So like your dad was nervous and fearful because he loves you. And yeah, then he sees you getting your picking on right. his yeah, son. He didn't understand. Like when we went to commercial, how it was like, it was great, man. Right. You know, like, right. right. And then you guys go back and like, yeah, you motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> you uh, idiot. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. So wait, how so, old were you? When you well, all right. So back yeah. up, back up. Uh, yeah, right, back so up. Let's all back yeah. up. How did you even end up interning on Howard Stern? Uh, were you like, like, I was like just, how old were you? I was just out of high school, pretty much. I was like nineteen. Um, did you just I, apply I, there? And you I, I wrestled in high school. My parents never talked about college. They just, that, like, you know, sure. all my friends and parents were like, you go to college, you go to college. My parents never said anything. So really? It was wow. probably like, you know, it was like February, my senior year, and I was sitting on the couch, and my dad walks in, and he goes, don't think you're going to be sitting your ass on that couch when you graduate. <laughs> you either get a job or you go to college. I went, I can go to college? He goes, yeah, I'll pay for it. I went, now you tell me it's February oh. in my senior year. <laughs> So I, I, was, yeah. I was I was I was a pretty good wrestler, and I went to go to Manhattan. I, I like the coach. I got recruited from Manhattan College, oh. and I, but my grades weren't good enough. Cool. So he said, "Why don't you go to my alma mater, Hunter, get your grades up, and you can go to Manhattan." Okay. So I started wrestling for Hunter College, and one day I'm outside. I was in Manhattan, so it was like I, I love being in Manhattan. I never went to Manhattan College, but I was in the in the city, and also one day I heard Howard give out the address. <laughs> and 600 Madison Avenue, and I'm like, that's down the block, because it was on 68th and Lex. Uh, so I went, holy shit! So I literally skipped class. I went, walked down Madison Avenue, 600 Madison Avenue. All of a sudden, third floor. Now I'm oh standing God. in the K. -Rock. So wait, you went there by yourself? Yeah. You yeah. just showed up. I just just walked in the K. Rock. There I am standing in the K. Rock wow. lobby. And I'm going, holy crap! And there was this. The receptionist was here, and then, then it was the door to get inside. And there was this ugly green plastic plant that was like right behind the door. Uh -huh. <laughs> and all I could think of is, I have to get past that plant. Aww. I have to get past that plant. So a couple of weeks later, I heard that they were looking for interns. Wait, so when you're sitting there, that's all you did, what? and then you left? Well, I, yeah, I, I basically before I got kicked out, yeah. All right, then you <laughs> left. Okay, wasn't, okay. Wasn't, wasn't, right. wasn't supposed to be there. So you saw the plant, you're like, and, I got to pass it, and then and I got out again. So I heard they were looking for interns, and I went, and my aunt was a secretary, and she did this whole professional resume for me, and wow. I dropped it off, and I heard nothing. So now that, was, the, that, that was my freshman year in college. So now, okay. come the, ne the following September, I hear they're looking for interns again. I went, well, since I sent a professional resume, and that didn't work, I wrote, I hand wrote no. a letter to Gary in my spiral notebook, every other thing I didn't. <laughs> I wish you brought it. I, I'm a horrible, well, they, they found it years later. That I had a horrible handwriting, spelling, whatever. <laughs> yeah, we know. We I specifically, <laughs> uh, I ripped it out of the spiral notebook the and kept the phrase fuzz. on there. 
I stuffed it in an envelope, walked <laughs> out, and I handed it to the receptionist. And two days later, I no, you're lying. No. Did you have a dream of being there? Like what, I don't know what it, just, what it was. was sorry, it was a process? whole. It, I, I was so determined to get past that plan. But like, that's how cool you did something yes, outside the, the scope plan. of what most people would do. I yeah, that's I'm, I'm, I'm a tenacious motherfucker. Uh, so I uh, like once so you I get always something a big in my fan head. Howard Stern. Did you ever yeah. have like a dream? You, of, like I, w I wish no, to I be there. Like, you know, I used to hear Ganji on the air. Well, I was I was still a dear friend of mine, the, the nicest person on the planet. But I hear him on the oh. air. I go. If he could do that, I could get on there, you know? Like, mm -hmm. what the fuck? That's actually good So advice. wait, so you shove it in an envelope, give it, and then you get a call. I, I get a phone call. And then what happens? Call. It was kind of weird because I just came back from, I, I'll never forget it, because my, my sister is six years younger than me, and I always said, if someone calls, could you just please write it down and whatever? <laughs> and I just got back from Alexander's, and showing my age. Of Alexander's course. was a big Dirt. department Wasn't store. Like that, so I, yeah, right, yeah. I come back from Alexander's, and my sister's sitting on the couch, she goes, Somebody called. I go, well, who? She goes, I don't know. I, I think his name is like Gary. I went, what do you mean, Gary? No. Gary who? She goes, oh. I don't know. I said, did you get a number? I went, she goes, no. So I grabbed it. I go, why didn't you get a number? Do you understand how important this could have been? Oh and I'm shaking her. My mother comes and grabs me by the back of the hair. Oh yanks my. me over. Get the fuck off your sister. I was like, you don't understand. <laughs> so the next day I called up and I was like, I just like, I was like, uh, did you, did you call me? And he, he, Gary was like, yeah, I did. Could you come in for an interview? Oh, my God. And he, I didn't initially get hired because... But wait, at that point, we were like, oh, my God, Dad. Well, no, God. I didn't tell anybody because I didn't want to, like, I didn't want to... Yeah, didn't, right. Like, you want to make sure kind of, you have it. it I, I, told a, I told a couple of good friends, and that was it. And I went for the interview, and Gary loved me. But he goes, look, you live in Brooklyn, uh, and... This other girl, she lives in Manhattan, and it's been my experience that nobody can make it here at five o'clock in the morning, wow. especially from Brooklyn. He goes, it's a problem I have. He goes, okay. but I, I want to do something with you. He was like, call him. This was like in September. He goes, call me like right around, right after like Thanksgiving. I think I may have a project for you. So mm -hmm. of course, the Monday after Thanksgiving, I call him up, and um, there was a bunch of blank tapes, and not blank, but they logged the show like six o'clock. Howard enters. 610 Howard mm -hmm. and Robin discuss there was like a box of tapes that weren't logs so he goes yeah this is what you need to do so I sat there in the back Aww. and was logging these tapes but I was also there in the morning so like it'd be like weird like I'd be listening to the old shows but listening to the live Aww. show and I'll never That's forget cool. I was in the back and I'd be like okay bring in our next guest uh, James Brown and I was like and I look and I watch James <laughs> Brown walk into the studio I'm like oh my god this is so fucking cool <laughs> and after that then uh I ripped through those tapes in a couple of months. And Wait, what'd your parents say? Oh, you didn't tell my them parents had, my, I, I was a nutbag. My parents didn't even, right. they were just they like, they were good, good parents, is. but they were like, oh, there's another thing he's doing, oh. you know? Like, I just, I was on my own. I moved out of that house as soon as I possibly could. But what could. was it like interning then at Howard Stern? It was amazing. <laughs> so how'd you it go from like, doing the thing to like the, yeah, getting on the I just, show. so I wound up going to, they transferred me to promotions after I finished that because they liked me enough. And I did the promotions department for, and I signed oh, them for okay. every every event. I was there. Five, I was like, "You're gonna let me in this door. You're not. I'm not leaving." So as long as I could, had permission to go in there, I was there every day as much as I possibly could. Oh. And then finally, Gary came to me and said, "Look, Robin's intern is leaving. Would you like to be Robin's intern?" I'm like, "No way." Duh. He goes, "Okay, cool." So start Monday. So what happened was Robin didn't get along with anybody, especially like the female interns or whatever. Really? So she, uh, Gary was supposed to tell her not to come in on Monday, and he forgot. So oh, now, uh, Ganji, I'm in the office, and Ganji's showing me what I need to do, because I was a news intern, so I used to go through and find interesting articles for her to, for her oh, newscast. You would, oh, and she, you would find the articles that she would... Well, well uh, she had her own stuff, but I would help her find stuff. I would highlight stuff, like, hey, okay. you may want to like use this. Oh, that's cool. And the girl came in, and, and now I... Now, which I'd girl seen, is that? Th th she was just her old intern that okay. she wanted gone. And Gary forgot to tell her not to come in on Monday. Oh, so, God. Robin, my first like hour being there, Robin comes in, slams oh, the door, and goes, Why the fuck is she still here? God damn it. And I'm, now, oh, now, wow. I'm right in the middle of a huge argument between Gary and, and, oh, and Robin. I'm like, What the fuck did I get myself into? <laughs> Shit. 
But uh, I never had a problem with quivers. To this day, she's still one of my best friends. Aww. She, like, I, they were like, she's never yelled at you. Really? Why? I'm like, I don't know. We just get along. You know, I don't want to tell what you. What about Howard? Well, on the air, yell. I mean, not off. But, you know, Robin, well, air, Robin you was notorious know. for getting into it with uh, her, in, I guess, interns or whatever. She just didn't, wow. you know. And I was, like, her last intern that she never had a problem with. So. And you had to make so, Howard's... Potatoes. Yeah, because stuttering John was in that. <laughs> so wait, so how did you get yeah. from Robert's intern to wait, the Wait, but I want to know. Well, because I, I would. Oh, but wait, I want to okay. know about Howard's baked potatoes. He always. Yeah, what does that, that, well, that mean? Because he didn't trust anybody. And John was supposed but why to. Why was he just eating just a baked potato? Because he was a nutbag. Yeah, you know? was like you know, he, I, I want to. I, I can't. I can't be fat, but he didn't understand how to eat, and so, so someone morning, told him big a baked potato and six ounces of turkey, and that was like. But it was, he wanted it at a certain time, but it always had to be. If you wanted it, it had to be ready, or you needed it when he was leaving. And Stutter and John just could never get his act together. So you then took over the role of yeah, the, the, basically the, everything that John couldn't handle, like showing up at five o'clock in the morning uh, every day. <laughs> that was like I, because I had to pick Howard up every morning. Ah, uh, so wait, what? no, how, how do we how do we get from whoa. there? Wait, how do we get yeah. from that well, to that? Well, it was a Stuttering John job that he couldn't handle. So wait, so you went to intern for no, Robin? No, well, yeah, but I, then, did, I did everything. But I, then I, when I, did you get to actual Howard? I, the whole time, it, I was, it was all he part was of like. Was, and then they were I was doing everything. I was answering phones. I was doing Robin's news. I was taking care of the guests. I was, you know, do, doing whatever I had to do. And then picking up Howard. And well, in the morning, <laughs> like Ronnie would, Ronnie would be downstairs, and I get a phone call, and be like, "Okay, come down," and I go down and let him in the building. Uh -huh. And one morning, I saved his life. Well, Ooh. tell us the story. Somebody had a loaded shotgun in the car. Oh. Wait, what? Yeah, no. I, I, I came in one day, and uh, there was a car parked in front, and I went. So we, sometimes you just pull in the front. Right. But there was a side entrance where they, you know, they did pull the garbage and shit. Right. And I go, uh, I said, Ronnie, why don't you come around the back today? There was a car out front. So Ronnie called me and goes, You had right. a bad feeling about it? Yeah. And then so, mm. I, the, you know, the gate goes up and I'm there and Howard gets out of the limo and the guy was standing on the corner. He goes, Howard Stern, you motherfucker. No I'm way. I'm going to kill you. And he starts running towards Howard. Mm. And Howard was like deer in the headlights. I grabbed him. And I was like, go run. And they go, so now there was what? a gate that came down and it was like a garage, like a car garage. And then there was a door and I got Howard through the door and Ronnie stopped the guy right there. And I held the door, got Howard upstairs and the marshals used to like have their coffee on the corner in the morning before they went out and served yeah. papers okay. and shit. And they saw what happened. They got out. The guy had a loaded shotgun in the front seat of the car. So you saved Howard's life. Did the guy get arrested? Yep. Wow. How come this wasn't I'd on the news? Because do you think Howard wants to know people had loaded guns waiting out in the front? No, of course not. But how amazing is that? So uh, I had to testify in front of a grand jury. So you, he owes you his life <laughs> then after this story. He doesn't owe me anything, obviously. If he no, did, but I that's, wouldn't be here. <laughs> I know, but that was... <laughs> what do you mean? I thought it's because you are. Because he does, you're here. And that was uh, smart thinking on your behalf. I think you should change the name to Date Night to Two Yentas. It would be perfect. <laughs> but I'm not Jewish. <laughs> that's all right. You're still a Yenta. <laughs> Am I? You're in Long that. Island, aren't you? Yeah, but I'm not a Yenta. What are we all Yentas because we're on Long Island? <laughs> yep. That? But that's pretty cool. I never would have known We're trying to give you props, okay? Don't Come on, I'm breaking balls. Just... So you saved the life. Wow, that's yeah. incredible. Yeah. Were they always really mean to you, though, live on the air, or was that part no, of the show? No, there was the, I know you were saying, it, like... But everybody got it. It wasn't just me. Right. Like, John got it. Gary got it. Gangie got it. But you never no, would get no. upset, like, in the moment. Like, oh, if no. somebody the, the, was picking the, on me was, like the, that, that, I That was the like, reason why he loved me even more, because I really was upset. I, like, I was that uncomfortable. I was that... Mm. But you never fired back. That's what I you mean. You can't. Like, How do you fire back <laughs> against that room? Right. It, was, it wasn't just Howard. It was Jackie uh, writing jokes and then Fred playing sound <laughs> effects and Rob in there and then all of a sudden the phone calls and then Gary coming in and someone else coming in. It was always, well, you weren't just against Howard. You were against, When like, they're belittling you, you don't get offended? You don't, or of course. You, or you just keep it inside. You're like, yeah, that's If funny, I didn't whatever. get offended, then it's not funny. Yeah. Uh, you know, so my uncomfortableness was my saving grace, really. That, right. That's what, yeah. I was just always so uncomfortable and nervous. Right. That that was funny to him, so that and it was sincere. If it was fake, they, right. it, it was worthless. So I was uncomfortable and me, and that's what he loved. That's what everybody kind of loved. I right, guess. that's what they loved. At least everybody right. in the room. I don't know about anybody else, but. But I love the episode when you're reading your diaries after you quit oh, yes. the show. What is that? Oh yeah, I, I kept the diary. But Jimmy Kimmel like, was like this. 
in the corner. He was scared of you because you were burping your yeah, Budweiser well, in his face. You're going to break my balls. I'm going to give it back to you some way. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was bartending the night before, and I was still drunk, so I was like <laughs> burping, blowing it in Jimmy's face. It was great. <laughs> and you didn't even care. That's why I like this guy. You don't, you're you so, yourself. That's why I like about you. So how long you were you care. an intern at Howard Stern? Almost eight years. Oh, wow. That's a long and then, so what happened time. that you ended up leaving? Yes, tell us the reason. Yeah, tell us. Why uh, you really left. Yeah. I, I, you know, I, I have uh, angry relatives that get mad at me <laughs> because I could have sued his ass and sued K-Rock. Um, technically, an intern is there, and in lieu of pay, you get credited school. Right. Mm -hmm. sure. You know, I was there for eight years. I stopped getting credit after, like, six months. But they mm. just kept me. So I literally worked for free oh. for that almost that whole time. And and I didn't give a shit. I right. you know right. I, you I, 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 I supplemented my income through appearances and right. you know I was in an off Broadway play or whatever I could. I hustled. You were in Sopranos. Yeah, well that was after, but no. you know I you know I'm a hustler. <laughs> so I've been a hustler paid. since I, I was you. a kid, so I hustled my dick off. <laughs> and, uh, so I did whatever. I didn't give a shit. I thought I was blessed and lucky to be able to walk through that door every morning. Yeah. Right. So, Fuck, I, if I ask for money, they may tell me to leave. Fuck money, you know? Oh. I'll find other ways to make money. And So you felt like they were taking advantage of no, you? No, I didn't at the didn't. time, but they were. At that time, uh, I thought I was taking I mean, advantage of them. Yeah, I was yeah, like, holy yeah. shit, how lucky yeah. am I still here? Like, they, they're right. Not, oh. So uh, at one point, the general manager, Tom Chiasano, who would have really got his, probably got fired if... I really went to like right. and made a labor laws, labor laws yeah. and shit that's yeah. highly illegal to have someone working for free. I was working like 60 hours a week. You know, I would stay there as long as I wow. could. But then at night I go out with Stuttering John on interviews and I would just do all this shit. Mm -hmm. I was not making a dime. But again, I didn't care. Yeah. Right. And one day he pulls me into his office and he's like, and Tom was always like a cool guy. But he was like, I could tell he was frazzled. He goes, so uh, are, you, are you still getting credited at school? <laughs> I go, Tom, I haven't been going to school for like, like no. three years, <laughs> I, let alone credit. He goes, well, then you can't be here. I went, what do you mean? He goes, you, you, you can't be here. I said, you fire me? He goes, no, well, you, you're not getting credit. Why are you here? I went, oh, uh, well, then maybe why don't you pay me? Well, I can't pay you. Oh. I went, I so are you left. saying, no, well, well, we'll get to that. Okay. So I... I I'm kind of flustered, and I always, I, I picked Howard up, and I walked him down every yeah. day. So I'm walking Howard down, I go, Tom says I, I can't be here because, uh, you know, I'm credit. not credited at school. And he right. goes, what? No, 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 I'll take care of it. So, oh, you know, man. I don't know, whatever he said, Tom, so it wound up, I was getting paid for 30 hours a week, because if they paid me 40, they had to give me health insurance. Right, oh, okay. So... They they paid me six minimum wage, which is like six bucks an hour at the time, oh and for only God. thirty hours a week. And I didn't wow. care. I was like, oh, cool, uh, right? Uh, an extra hundred and eighty bucks yeah. in my pocket, which is basically right. what it worked out to. <laughs> yeah. And I didn't give a fuck. So, whatever. That solved a lot problem for that moment. But now, once they started paying me, they got that corporate leash around my neck. Mm, so now it's yep. like, well, now you have to do this. You have to do that. It wasn't mm -hmm. like, you know, right. uh, willy nilly. Now all of a sudden, now I got in charge of photocopying these articles. I, anything that Howard's name was mentioned in? Yes, like pre press. And yeah. the, the, he subscribed to this service where every week it was a box of news articles yeah. and I had to wow. make five copies, one for Howard, one for his agent, one that was archived on mm -hmm. special paper, oh one that God. went to Tom Chiasana. And, and it's, it's not just like, oh, well, I'm taking this card and I'm putting it down. They were articles. So they were like, you had to like really <laughs> kind of like piece it together. <laughs> And right. do all this, and, and there were so many of them that, like, literally the show would end, I'd walk Howard down, and I'd spend the next three or four hours on a copy machine. Yeah. Were you like, this sucks? It's, it completely sucked. So now I was like, okay, but I'm working all these hours, and I'm only getting paid for 30, so it was a year that that went down. And I sat to Tom, I said, Tom, it's been a year, and um, I would like to get a raise or something. I said, I'm working 60 hours, and I'm only getting paid for 30. He goes, well, I'll give you the company standard. I'm like, well, what's that? He's like, like 25%. I'm like, but 25% of six dollars. Like, what? <laughs> like that, that's that's like a couple. Of, that's not even a, <laughs> stop. What? I couldn't I even be like. Can't. I was like, I said, I said, well, how about this? I said, I'm working 60 hours a week. What? Why don't you just pay me yeah, 40 so I can get health insurance? He goes, ho, ho, ho. no, no, no. I can't do that. Oh. I went, you can't. 
He goes, no, 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 you'll get your raise, but you know that that's all I can do. He goes, if you only if you only get paid at thirty, then you have to leave at ten o'clock every day now. Uh -huh. So now I walk, I go to walk Howard down that day, and I go, well, yeah, Tom, uh, he's not going to pay me for the hours I work, and he won't give me health insurance, and won't give me a raise. And Howard turned and looked at me and said, yeah, well, that's Tom. And at that moment, I said, wait, so Howard couldn't do anything? Of course he couldn't. But he, he didn't. didn't. He didn't. And he goes, well, that's Tom. And at that moment, I went, I, I got to go. Oh, so it was clarity. I got to go. I was like, it's I, time to move on. You're not going to stand up for me, motherfucker. Right. You're not going to go to bat right. for me. I went, yeah. I better leave now and leave as a gentleman. <laughs> because if I gentleman. stay, I'm going to bring a shotgun to work one day and it's not going to be good. <laughs> <Let> <laughs> you know, I, I'm going to burn this bridge. And I didn't, I always knew I was confident in myself where I, I didn't need this as a crutch. This wasn't, yeah. it just didn't define me. So I was confident mm -hmm. enough to go out and That's pretty cool. do my thing on my own, no matter what it was, but I wasn't going to stay there when nobody had my back. Mm -hmm. What was your goal though? Did you want to get on air there? Like, what, No, what I, I, ne I, I never goal? wanted to be in radio. I just, I just thought, I thought oh. it was the coolest fucking show <laughs> in the world. Right. So you, you just wanted to get wanted paid to for the right. hours you worked. Well, at that moment, yes. But you know, I just was happy to be involved. I knew it was like gold, whatever it was. And it was fun for me. And I was there. At, how old am I here? Yeah, that's you know cool. what I'm saying. Like I'm like right. meeting It's not like you had an intention. Like I, I'm gonna try to get there. Like it just. I didn't. I didn't know what I wanted to do. All I knew is that that was the coolest radio show right. on the planet. Yeah. And I knew I needed to be there. Yeah. For whatever reason it was. And you got past the plant. I got past the plant. You got past the plant. And for many years. Um, you did, you know, man. I was happy enough to be there, and I just left. And I wanted it to be so, happy. So what did you do? So so Howard responds mm -hmm. like that. And then what's your next step? Like, what do um, you do? Do you just resign? I, I, like, I, what do you do? I, I, they couldn't tell me if there was, like, the talk about that CBS show. And I thought maybe if that uh, happened, I might oh, get some yeah. more money. But they wouldn't say yes or no if I should stay or if I shouldn't stay. Right. And I'm, I'm going to be Mr. Angry employee. <laughs> I better leave because it's going to be a bad. So I... Basically, just uh, resigned. I bowed out as a gentleman, you know, and said, uh, I've given you enough time. And uh, I was my girlfriend at the time, she was an actress and she was in private parts. And I had mm -hmm. done Grandma Sylvia's funeral and done a bunch of acting and shit like that. And you know, I, I used that as a oh, I'm gonna go to LA to be an actor. Oh, but I was just leaving because I needed to go. Yeah, uh, I tend to be angry. Some things, and but let's talk about that. Howard dedicated his book to you, which yeah, which which is the weirdest thing that's ever really? happened. To me yeah, Miss life. America. So now, yeah. when that happened, were you like in shock, total shock? I, I still don't believe it. I Wait, how did he dedicate it. the book to him? You know, in the dedication yeah, in the yeah. beginning of the book. What does it say? The whole nice thing. Let tell tell us. Yeah, basically. That this I had, had a, I had a, I, I had a, I had a weird dream, that Howard bashed me in the book. It was like an anxiety dream. Like oh, it was like, okay. was, you know, <laughs> we were working, he was working on the, the book. book. Yeah, but no, right. while he was working was that on the book. Before after you boozed up and snorted coke and hooked up with hookers. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I uh, no, I had never touched blow when I worked on that show. Thank God, because is was, your mom watching you? Wait, why are we talking about this? All right, go. No, <laughs> so uh, the the, the, uh, the I had that weird anxiety dream, and before, and I I told Howard about it. Like he was like, I said, yeah, I said this weird dream about. It. The book. And he goes, what do you mean? Oh, and he geez. acted weird. And he was like, what? <laughs> and I go, oh, nothing. And I, and I stopped myself. I go, oh, the book. Yeah, I had a dream. The book was great. He goes, well, why did you say that? I went, because he thought maybe someone told me about oh. what was going to happen. Oh. So, but I, I had this anxiety about something bad was going to happen with the book. Mm -hmm. That's and weird. So now, the first case of book, the, the what comes into the studio, it's the morning, the book comes out. And he, uh, Gary, give me a knife. He cuts open the case. He goes, I want to give this first book to Steve Brillo. And I went, oh, holy yeah. shit. I, it's, <laughs> uh, it was real. Like, what, why is he doing this? Like, yeah. he brings me in and he goes, here's the first book. I want you to read the dedication. And now, oh, like, I, I couldn't read. That's nice. Because, like, I'm thinking, oh, my God, he's going to make me read his words bashing me. Right. <laughs> and, like, so I start reading the dedication and I could you know you, you could see down the page and, and I see my name the at the air. bottom Aww. and I'm like I can't yeah. breathe yeah because I'm like my I, and then it gets really you know nice. it goes it gets so like I want to thank all the interns who work tirelessly for free 
It's, you know, part of what you do is why I'm so successful. And I want to give a special debt of gratitude to Steve Grillo. He's there every morning with a smile on his face. He's never late, never complains. Aww. But nice. I was so nervous and freaked out that I said debit. <laughs> and then he nailed you that, for it. Oh yeah, he goes, wait, what? what you, <laughs> I dedicated a book for you and you fucking tr like you can't even get it right. I was like, what do you mean? I don't want this like I could not That's comprehend awesome. what was going on. That why me? Right. Like me. Your parents, right. your wife, your kids. Fucking me. That's you were paying cool. you were you were working me? for free for eight yeah, years. But like yeah. you know, you know, yeah, stop paying my rent now, motherfucker. <laughs> so now, do you still have any ill feelings toward Howard, or are you? I don't. I, you know, listen. So it was an amazing part of history that I got to be a part of. It, he's an amazing, wonderful person. You know, at the way things are now, it's just, it's just, it's not, you know, conducive. You know, it's a whole different world over there. He's in another world. If I saw him in the street, I'd love to give him a hug. You know, oh, and and still, you know, thank him for the great times I had. But it, you know, it's weird over there now. It's not the you same. You do think it's weird? It, oh, I know it's weird. Oh. It, it's a completely different world over there now. It's, you think it's not the same out? show. Not I, the same you can't thing. see sold out. How could you sell out when you're already a billionaire? You know, like sell out. What are you selling out? Like, the people, it... people change. They evolve. They move mm -hmm. on. They mm -hmm. turn into different people. We got, you're not the same mm -hmm. person you were 20 years ago, are you? Really so. Not. No. But everybody um, loves the regular yeah, Howard that well, he used Well, of course not, but you know, tough shit. Right. <laughs> you, know, you can't do anything about it. No one's going to turn around and uh, he's not going to change for anybody. He is who he so is and that's that. What, he's doing. what does he give a flying fuck for? He's got right. more money than his kids' kids' kids to spend. Right. You know, it, it, I, obviously, I, I haven't listened really since I left because I don't have a car. I don't listen to the radio, so it's not like I go home oh. and listen to radio. Uh -huh. This is in the 1930s, you know. <laughs> ain't no, ain't no fireside chat going on over here. I want to watch TV. You know? so, so, it, so when you left, though, that was it. So, so what did you do? You just gave notice. No, left, I, I went what? to LA, but then I got the gig on The Sopranos. Oh, okay. So uh, the the first yeah. AD for Private Parts was a man, God rest his soul, by the name of Michael DeCasper. Mm -hmm. uh, he he loved me, and the, that, the Private Parts was my. My, you know, breaking my cherry into the movie business, and I learned so much. <laughs> breaking my cherry. You know, I like I, 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 the private parts definitely changed my life because I, uh, I didn't know what I wanted to do, but Howard got me the job oh. on private parts, and I was a PA. Mm. But I was called what you call a must hire, and what? usually uh, before you get to that. be on set as a PA, you have yes, to do six months yeah. in the office. Oh. So the guy that was in charge, like they, they call it a key PA. He was resentful of the fact that I didn't have to spend time in the office, that I got most hired. Oh. So he made my life a living hell. Mm. He gave me every shitty job I could possibly do. Aww. So the first like two weeks I spent in the back of Silver Cup Studios by myself, after working the radio show, and then doing another 10 hours on the movie, ringing bells. Oh. Every time they go cut and you know, all rolling, yeah. ring, mm. ring, ring, cut, ring. Good. And for two weeks I sat in the back, nothing. I get and so I was gonna quit. I was like this close. <laughs> I was like literally thinking of how I was gonna do this. And one of my best friends goes, "So what's it like being on a movie set? What do you do?" I said, "Oh, it's so fucking boring. You know, like <laughs> the, 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 the set dressers gotta come in and they gotta do this, and then electric comes in and they put the fucking lights up, and then they gotta move the walls." And I went on and on bitching about what this, and I went, "I didn't know anything like that two weeks ago." <laughs> I went, "Oh shit, I'm fucking learning." Fuck! <laughs> I'm learning. I'm learning. I'm like, all right, all right, all right, all right. So I, I, every day after that, I would pick up the sides, which is basically the scenes they're gonna shoot for the day. Yeah. And I would go over the sides, and I would try to figure out how Benny Thomas was gonna shoot that scene. Oh. And, uh, and when I started getting there, I was like, oh, I'm just gonna come over the shoulder, and they're gonna move the wall, and they're gonna come over his shoulder, and they're gonna do a two shot, and they're gonna do a uh, bat. And, I, and I, that's when I really started to. I went, wow. This and was then, your passion. You wanted Well, to it wasn't passion. just a passion. It was something I just fell into. You would have never been involved in it had no. you not done the other stuff. Yeah. So, and it, and it introduced everybody that was on that movie, Private Watch. First of all, it was during the summer. We had the best crew. Aww. We had the most fun. It was such a great. All those guys, I'm still kind of friends with, which has oh. kind of helped my company now. Oh. And, that, and that, that's why, you know, I'm where I am now. So because what, basic, tell everybody what you're doing now. I, 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 I still I, want to talk about the John Stevens. So I, my wife left me. <laughs> my, ah. wife, my wife left me. Okay. I got, Why did she leave you? You're congratulations. Yeah, well, whatever. Uh, Give me some hookers after the show. Yeah, please, something. Yes. Anybody? <laughs> I thought we were going to get a blowjob when I came out of here. 
Um, so, uh, <laughs> Eli will give you my, one my, on the my way. Wife, my wife, I, I always had a problem uh. as, when I was acting with the heat from the lights, especially as a stand-in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As EJ's stand-in for three years, and I sat, she stand there, and the, the lights are fucking hot. Yeah. <laughs> and so my wife left me. I got fired from the job oh. I was at. And I was when really was in a, uh, five years. It's going to be six years oh. in February. Okay. And I, my friend goes, I was crawling into a bottle of vodka. It was really bad. I was like, I didn't know what to do. Oh. My buddy goes, yo, oh, man, my buddy has his production house, post-production house. Why don't you come down and throw in a party? I go, all right. So I go down, and I got met the party, and I'm like, eh. And the guy <laughs> goes, hey, this is my friend Roy. He's the, this is his house. You know, I go, hey, nice to meet you. He goes, hey, man, you want to see my invention? I go, whatever. <laughs> And he goes, he, like he, brings his room, he goes, so check this out. It's an LED light for TV and film. It, 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 it's got no heat. It goes any color, any color temperature, and check it out. It's got special effects. And I go, you know this is a fucking game changer, right? <laughs> and he goes, what? I, go, I said, this is a fucking game changer, dude. I'm like, uh, you, you, you need to hire me. I'll get you on TV and film. Oh. And he's like, I'll hire you. I, I don't even fucking know you. I went, <laughs> I was like, you're going to fucking hire me. <laughs> and uh, so he goes, oh, well, a big well, change from I'm yeah. working for free. I know. Yeah, well, That's so, pretty ballsy. Well, well, here's the deal. Good so, job. I, so I, I go, I go, I so now I don't say anything. So I get his number and he goes, we're not hiring anybody. I went, no, nah, all right. So I called him up like a couple of days later. I go, yo, get your light and meet me at the Ed Sullivan Theater. Get I got your you a, light. <laughs> I, I got you a demo with David Letterman. He goes, what? I go, yeah, don't be late, man. Aww. So I get him into light with awesome. uh, demo with David Letterman and two days later I called him up and said yo get your light meet me at uh, Sirius I got you a demo with Howard Stern TV and he goes oh okay and then we're going up in the elevator I go you know this is your last freebie right and he goes oh right 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 <laughs> they hired me and now five wow. years later I'm a partner in the company so and we're on every fucking, it's called Bright Shot and, and you're on every all the, all the Marvel shows Daredevil oh. uh, Iron Fist uh, you know That's like so all cool. uh, Jessica Jones Spider-Man we did, we did well, we're on like uh, Designated wow. Survivor, like anytime you see police lights and shit like that, uh, Gotham, like we're on like everything. Do you That's love amazing. it? The tick. Uh, do I love it? It's the best gig ever. All right, so Wait, not, yeah. Yeah. So, so, you know, it's cool. We're, we're, we're still at a break the evening the, stage. You're in the growing stages, what, that's what, all right. What, what, but what, like, we're, we're the little guy in a big world. Like what? all these like, sh like big lights, like Aerie and all these companies, they've been around forever and all these guys are all dinosaurs, so LEDs are, really just starting to make their way and all these old dinosaurs go, oh, so I, I already yeah. know. But now the younger guys are all starting to use this. So it's kind of cool, not good. Yeah, yeah, so, not good. So now, like, do you ever like think back and say, oh my God, I worked for free for a million years. Here I get this opportunity. And you just step into it, right? You just step into the room, the gods are go, I have this LED stuff. You're like, oh my God. And here you're doing what you're doing. Like, that's pretty amazing. Uh, Story of my life. Yeah, <laughs> I gotta this be guy honest, walked like, into Howard Stern. Like, how am I gonna pass the plan? Right. Yeah, but, but that's uh, pretty impressive. It's yeah, just part of like you know, man. it's I owe I owe everything to wrestling. Uh, you know, really? wrestling is like the moment I decided to become a wrestler changed my life to this day because if I didn't wrestle in high school, I would have never gotten into Hunter College. If I didn't go to Hunter mm. College, I would have never gotten into Howard Stern. That's how it works, show. Steve. And then, and wrestling is what gave that's me my tenacity. Yeah, my, but no, but it's you because it wasn't. Mm. It was you who went to Howard Stern show and saw the plan. Like I'm gonna pass it. That yeah. was you. Yeah, but I just yeah, I'm determined, hustling motherfucker. Yeah, but that's <laughs> pretty impressive. Not many mm. people are. Uh, well, so not these days. Oh, the kids out there, Jesus yeah. Christ. I, I know. All right, let's not kill The fans want to know, are you still yeah. friends with John Stamos? Because we all love uh, that. Yes, yeah, so yeah, uh, so what well, happened with John, John, if I saw John, he'd give me a hug. Uh, I I kind of lost touch with him. I think he changed his number, not because of me. <laughs> He's like but, so uh, cheap, bro. Uh, some you know, it, it, it's no, but like the last time when we, like, it was probably like four years ago when I was out in L.A. and I called him, uh, I, he invited me over for his house to lunch, and we had a nice fucking cool afternoon. Can you cool give the synopsis of what had happened back in the day for people? Well, Samos, I used to, you know, part of the, how I made some, my hustle game was I worked at one of the biggest nightclubs in the city, and I did the VIP ropes. That's and, right. right. Um, which club? Which it, it was called uh, Club Expo. Oh, okay. Okay. And, uh... <laughs> So I, I have so many great stories. I got high with so many people. I got I I, I smoked bunch with I smoked bunch with Tupac. No Tupac. Yeah. way. Tupac was my boy. We man. love Tupac. Red yeah. God bless Supposedly his soul. He's Tupac still alive was the somewhere. cool. I hope Him he is because he would still... totally remember me, man. People say he's still alive. He, he, he was shooting a movie with Mickey Rourke, and he they came in every Friday and Saturday. 
So wow. I, I'm just like little, like I'm like 20 years old. I'm like letting everybody. Uh, the Our owner travel goes. The, 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 the owner goes. Don't, don't let anybody in unless I say so. So like Ricky Rock and Tupac come in, and I always I, so I, cool. I hated Tupac because <laughs> I just the thug life and he's promoting like being right. a, a criminal. A gangster yes. or whatever, and I, yeah. I, I, it was my first lesson and never judge a book by its cover uh -huh. because mm. so now I, I'm the one who's got to oh they need more champagne oh, and he was always smoking these blunts and they smoked so <laughs> fucking. Good. I never <laughs> smelled. It was like the first time I smelled chronic. I never right. smelled the shit that I was smoking. Like it was like Bronx barbecue. <laughs> yeah, it was like horrible. And so, but and, 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 you got it so, from the prostitutes on the corner. Yeah, pretty much. And so, uh, and I'm like, I gotta deal with this fucking thug man. And then Mickey Rock was a dick, but Tupac. Please and thank you, thank wow. you, thank you, thank you. Aww, Anybody, the, an autograph picture. He was so nice. I'm like, why is he being nice? I'm like. Don't be nice. You're you just supposed to be a like dick. Him. So finally, I got. It's like two or three weeks <laughs> after. Like he's. Uh, I said. So he's down. I go, man, man. What the fuck is that? You smoking the best way? He goes, no, nigga. I didn't know you smoked. <laughs> and he like I, every time the blunt went around, he. Aww. And he gave it to me. Went around and he Very always generous. made sure. That, he shared his. Well, so here's another cool. What a said. generous. Guy. But he went. He went out of his way. So. Aww. So finally, I go. Yo, Pac, I, you know, this is like after, like, yeah. a couple weeks after, I go, Yo, Pac, I don't know if you know this, but <laughs> I, I, I work know. on the Howard Stern show. Would, would you want to be a guest? He goes, yo! He goes, yo, Howard Stern's my nigga, yo! yo oh, my yo, give God. Me a I, I'll give you my number, man. So I had, Tupac, get I had Tupac booked as a mystery guest the Wednesday before Thanksgiving, probably 1994. Oh, my God. And I was so excited because it was like, Gary was That's like when I graduated high school. Yeah, shut the fuck up. All right, good. <laughs> so Gary was like, I can't believe you got him. This is gonna be the and he went and promoted get hard. It's gonna be the hugest surprise. You're never even okay. gonna guess who the fuck is this. And well. the phone rings like six thirty, and it was Tupac's manager, and he goes, Pac's really mad at me. I booked him an early flight to go down to Atlanta to go see his mom for Thanksgiving. Aww. And you could hear Pac yelling at him in the background. He's like, try motherfucker, apologize. <laughs> and Aww, Gary, so nice. he goes, he goes, but Pac wants to come back on Monday. Is that okay? And Gary's like, sure. And Pac went down to Atlanta. Pac came back Aww. Saturday. He went to the recording studio and that was when he got shot the first time. And I never saw Pac again. Because uh, he never, it, so he got, that was I the first time he got shot. That story. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that was better yeah, than John was, Stamos. Uh, <laughs> I never John knew Stamos. that. Pac really? was Pac was. You were gonna get him so on the Howard nice. Stern show. I had him on the Aww. Howard Stern show, and I thought I'm gonna he's, I'm gonna be in there with Pac. It's gonna be legendary. Was Everybody, Howard like? Um, um, well, he told him on Monday because he got shot Saturday. It was like breaking news all over the place, and Gary was like, he was supposed to be here on Wednesday. That was the mystery, That's guys. Horrible. So he, he never came around after that, and then he died or didn't die. Who knows? Did you get a picture with him? Oh, there was no cell phones back then. You it didn't was do the like, you know, like, camera like <laughs> No, no, I, you know. <laughs> Since you get a picture, who needs a that. picture? All right, so what happened with John Stamos? Well, there's nothing, yeah. nothing bad happened. Like, Stamos <laughs> used to come to that club. The, the promoter, who's like a big actor now, is uh, um, he he did uh, he does like marquee and stuff like that. His name is Wass. And John Wasserman, and he uh, was they were like best but friends. But Howard so, Stamos, stole Stamos, from Stamos, him. Stamos used to come into the club, yes. and he was a huge fan. But he'd be like, ah. Oh, I know why Howard doesn't want to have me on. I'm too squeaky clean, and I'm never gonna get, I'm never gonna dish. Excuse me. <laughs> oh God, you're burping our, you're beer in our yeah. face. No, it's he's like not. Yeah. He's not. He's being very respectable. Um, <laughs> what are you so, burping in our face now? So, uh, what are you drinking? No, Jeff? so Stamos would come in, and then we became friends. And you know, he, like it was weird because they South Park had just come out, and I oh, guess they did South something Park. about him, and he was he he called me up and go, could you explain the South Park stuff to me? You know, like, no. oh, like oh, that's yeah, cute. so. Oh, yeah, that's right, because they imitated him. I yeah. Love that. And Tom Cruise. And a bunch of yeah. <laughs> so, but no, no, he's, he, he's a sweetheart of a guy. He really yeah, he is a nice, really nice, genuine guy. human being. He's very protective of his image because he wants to. Did it, Ralph know. really steal him from you? Well, I introduced him. Well, don't get me wrong. Stamos was a fan, and like Howard wouldn't have him on in the beginning, like very early. Cause he, but John didn't really want to go on because he's not right. going to answer. He goes, right. I know I'll be a boring guest. Howard knows I'll be a boring guest. Right. So... Ralph used to come to the nightclub that I worked at, and I introduced Ralph is, him. Ralph tell everybody Howard's stylist. Howard's stylist. girlfriend? <laughs> <laughs> no, but for I people who don't, know, don't yeah. know, Ralph was Howard's stylist. And I don't, yeah, something like that. You don't want to explain the whole story. That's why they I just, used to yeah, pick yeah, on Howard, Howard just Stern. Uh, Howard and again, been, you're doing it on Dean. I would go to <laughs> Explain the whole story. It, it was just a joke, but like once Ralph and 
like Stamos was my friend and Ralph became friends with him and it just seemed like that Ralph he feels like Ralph stole well no not that I feel like, but no, but, like, oh, like I think Stamos I mean Ralph would go to Stamos you don't want to be really seen hanging out with oh, you know that's like, not, like well, we I can't that I can't sometimes. confirm that that actually happened <laughs> right. but like right, you know it, Stamos is so he's so yeah. image oriented and Ralph has which seen is not healthy Howard, which is odd to me yeah well that's that's the, whole, the whole thing is odd. All right, but go ahead, yeah, continue. But, uh, I, you know, I just in my head imagine that Ralph's going, Stamos, you don't want right. to keep your image. You, yeah, don't, yeah. you don't want to be seen for real. Right. You know, like, yeah. you know, it's like, it got weird because now Ralph's hanging out at Stamos' house and then uh, <laughs> now he's not talking to me. Like, how the fuck did that happen, right. motherfucker? That's we were weird. really cool and then now I get Ralph in the middle. and So I made, I made a joke of it, you know what I'm saying? Right. So, like, whatever. I'm sure it's partially true, but. So what happened talk. afterwards? Did you talk to Stamos after and be like, bro? No, I, I, no, we came up, came up, came up on the air happened. at some point. I came back on and, uh, oh, damn, who cares? I knew, I knew it'd be, I, I knew it'd be, I, I knew it'd be like a controversial thing and be yeah. funded to like make an issue out of it. So right. I said, I made, I did it on purpose. It was a contrived thing. I was like, well, if I bring that up, I'm sure they're going to have some fun with it. So. There you go. It's but did you ever thing. find out <laughs> from Stamos? No, he's like well, Stamos wouldn't tell me. He anyway, wouldn't tell but, you. But uh, yeah, he I, um, is Ralph still friends with him to this day. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, Ralph's, Ralph's a, he doesn't let go. He's like a tick. <laughs> <laughs> so Steve, I have to tell you, you should be really impressed with yourself. Yeah, you, you should. Tell, uh, I'm really not. I know. You that's should that's be, the though. problem. You need a lot more. Go, go to StarLovingLife.com. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, why, yeah. Right? that's why I'm behind in my rent. <laughs> Jeez. All right. So yeah. Steve, listen, you did an amazing job. I mean, come on, give me a break. You you accomplished a lot. You wanted to you have a, you're pretty motivated, more motivated than most people that we know. So kudos to you. Yeah, everybody well, in their life wants yeah. to be on Howard Stern. So Steve, you made it happen. You got past the plan. Exactly. So Steve, where do people find you now? Um, I, I'm on Facebook, but I don't, I, I'm you running out of friends, <laughs> you know, like, right. no, 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 like, like, there isn't much room. Like a, a I haven't done a business page yet, uh, That's but you know, there's the Bright Shot page, B-R-I-T-E-S-H-O-T, if anybody's shooting a film or anything like that, like, uh, we're the, the next generation of lights for TV and We're going to have you for date night. Yeah. And yeah. Well, we're the fucking dates. There ain't no dates here. Oh, Staring right. at these two guys. All right, let's not ruin it. Wait, let's not ruin it. This guy's let's running home for a it. Jewish holiday. <laughs> can we just let's ask you You're banging right. that dude. What the fuck? <laughs> Steve, <laughs> can we just ask you one quick question? Uh, were you upset about Jackie, the joke man, leaving Howard Stern? Do you think he got uh, well, back? you know, like, I, what do you think yeah, happened it, with that really quick? That was a big mistake on both their parts because... Uh, I, Jackie, you know, had every right to get as much money as he possibly could, but I think that it, it crossed over into the fact that, uh, and from what I understand, I, you know, it, Howard does a lot of live commercials, and Howard yeah, gets yeah. that live commercial money, mm -hmm. but he used Jackie as a crutch. Mm -hmm. Oh, Jackie, what'd you do to speak? Oh, I had some Heineken, yeah, yeah. You know, like, oh, every okay. live commercial became, like, you know, you'd be bouncing off of Jackie, and I think Jackie... Look for some like live commercial money, and oh, right. you ain't touching that nigga's money. <laughs> I can tell you that <laughs> but right now. You think now. Jackie deserved it and should have? I think Jackie deserved whatever he could have got. Jack, mm -hmm. he was so fast, so quick. Aww. Like I would watch him write a joke and yeah. then put it to the side, and I'm going, because he already knew where Howard was going. Oh, uh, wow. Yeah, he was awesome like it was already written show. before Howard even knew he was going there. Oh, wow. So, uh, and he's so sharp and so quick, and. It, it was just, uh, it was amazing to watch him work, and he's still one of my, he's, he's one of my best friends. We love right? Jackie. You think we it's love bad Jackie. The, joke, the book man. is coming out from Bout of Stern. That's right. Bout of Stern. It's already October. Bout of Stern. Another very, yeah, October something quick. Yeah. It's coming up quick. Go Bout of Stern. Amazon, go buy but, it. But, you know, I don't think it's a, you know, radar online, they really know how to get a story wrong. Uh, well, well, because they, they, uh, they write these stories. They're very Howard Stern obsessed. Yeah, they get it wrong all the time. So yeah. I did something. So, granted, what your book's coming out. You know, oh. the, the, the book's coming out. Jackie needs publicity, but whatever they're writing, you know, Jackie called me. and goes, I, I don't mind the publicity, but could they get it right? You know, right. Like, yeah. so Raider Online, the Raider Online is what got me banned from Howard. That's on Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. They got you banned right. from Howard. Yeah, 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 yeah. Before we go, why? What? What'd they get you banned well, from? Well, I was kind of half in the bag at Comic Con, and it was when like Periscope first came out, oh, and I, I was doing Periscope. like a live. Video. You're on Periscope as well, right? There. Yeah. <laughs> Show and your feet. They like that. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, so I got nice yeah, take feet. Take your foot off. Yeah, go ahead. So, Look at uh, his feet. He's got uh, nice hammer toes. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. So uh, I was kidding around, and an article just came out about Howard, about how he, he's like mainstream and kissing all these celebrities' ass. So I went 
And I didn't know people watched Periscope. I didn't yeah. know what the fuck it was. So I just went on and basically reiterated that whole article in a half a drunken state of Comic Con on Stacey Pressman's oh. Periscope. Oh. And I didn't well, I didn't realize that someone was stalking my social media from oh. Radar. So as soon as I did that, Uh-oh. they wrote a whole big article oh. about it. So I didn't. Oh, so shoot. all of a sudden, my Twitter feed's blowing up, and I, I'm not big on Twitter. I'm Steve Gorilla seventy two with. <laughs> Uh, Twitter, We're not big Facebook, on it, but, uh, look, we have yeah, well, I've got Grillo Vader on Instagram. Um, <laughs> so, uh, the, all of a sudden, like, my phone's blowing up. I go, turn to my partner Roy. I go, Roy, I went, what's Raider online? Is this a big deal? He goes, uh-uh. well, only two or three million people a day read that shit. I went, oh, wow, what the fuck? It was a joke. <laughs> so I just thought it was no big deal. So. <laughs> I went to go uh, meet Robin up at Sirius because we were going to lunch. Uh uh-uh. uh And she goes, that this was like almost a year afterwards and she goes she comes out of the studio she goes come here and she goes did you do a radio online interview i went no Uh-oh. i said it was a joke and they and they they, they wanted yeah. to write a story someone was talking I was yeah, like, be so it was a goof yeah. i didn't even know i didn't i thought it was like i didn't even know it was going public it was a yeah. joke she goes well I, you're banned you have to go I'm like, I'm banned for what? She goes, you have to wait in the lobby. I can't, I can't be seen with you up here. Oh no! And I was like, for that? And she was like, and she was like, pissed. All right. Well, thanks for coming. Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. You're amazing. So anyway, um, <laughs> all right. So wait. Delete this, please. <laughs> Let's go so hit that plan, Steve. That's right. So Steve, people can find you on Facebook, Instagram, no, that was a cool story. Uh, Twitter, Twitter, everything <laughs> else. Steve, you're the best. You should be really proud of yourself. Uh, Don't be so hard on yourself. Where can we hire your lights? Uh, (laughs) Just call me. (laughs) So we're giving out your cell number live on the air? Yeah, 555. What's the the website again? It's it's brightshot.com. B-R-I-T-E-S-H-O-T.com. I I helped you out. Uh, yeah, you mentioned this show and I'll double your rates. Oh! Thanks everyone for watching. We'll be back next Friday. I'll Tune double in. your rates. Show me your feet watching. again, Steve. Go subscribe and like us They're on nice. Facebook. No fungus. What do you put? No hair. Do you do the cows remover? No.